everyone helped raise the kids. Um, teachers were very highly respected people. And um, ministers played, and the church played a tremendous role in this. Um, now, that closeness, I believe, uh, you know, the racism of the times probably had something to do with it, but it was more, I think, of a survival thing that we've got to train our children to get along in this world. And uh, they could, you know, if they started some certain things, if they fight, they're going to have trouble. Now, they may meet physical violence, <laughs> uh, economic violence, or social violence. And they tried to prepare the children, I believe, to work, to, to actually live in the white world. Um, I can recall, you know, many saying, you know, being told that, um, you know, you, one of the attributes that you should have when you grow up is to be able to get along with white folks. Well, what about white folks getting along with me? Well, you, you could be told easily that, you know, you work for them. You will work for them. Uh, you will, um, you know, they will have a say so as to how well you make it. And, um, and they can even, you know, eliminate you and will eliminate you if you, uh, you know, get too much out of line. But it was that closeness there, and I, and I think it's something blacks have lost, is that sense of community where the whole community was involved in the rearing of the children. Blacks have been, for, for ever since we've been here, I guess, have been told that you were, you know, you were dragged out of, you were brought out of Africa, uh, and you were brought to this land, you were uncivilized, and you were made civilized, and look at you today, and you have the white man to thank for that. And you have done nothing uh, to build this country. Uh, you have... Uh, done nothing to help defend it. Uh, you've not been involved in science. Uh, you know. Now these are things that I know from childhood. Now thank God I had teachers who told me otherwise. But anyway, I believe that if our black youngsters had some perception of their history, I think things would be different. I believe they'd be more highly motivated. Now the father of black history came from this area from my county. His name was Dr. Carter G. Woodson. And that was his perception back in 1912. And uh, he made a statement that I'll always remember. And that was that um, in order for you to know where you are going, or where you can go, you first of all got to know where you are. And you can't know where you are until you know where you've been. And once you find out where you've been, know where you are, then you can chart your course to where you can go. But see, we don't, as blacks, we don't, as a people, we don't know where we have been. Consequently, we don't know where we are. And so many of us <laughs> don't know where we can go, the, height, you know, the difference we can go. Um, that book, The Hidden and the Forgotten, um, was dedicated to the youth of Buckingham, Fluvanna, and Prince Edward County and especially to those that I've taught. i taught in those three counties. Um, most kids, uh, youngsters, have no idea. Most of them have the, the, the attitude that if I'm from Prince Edward County, I'm from a place where blacks have never done anything. And since no one else has ever done anything, probably I won't do anything. And that is not the case. 